This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for June 17, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, 30 people killed in 29 fatal crashes in May, says RSU. 30 people were killed in 29 fatal crashes in May 2023. This uh, compares to the 51 people who perished in 46 fatal crashes in May 2022. The statistics are contained in the latest release from the Road Safety Unit, which is located in the Ministry of Science, Energy, Telecommunications and Transport. They show that pedestrians accounted for 27% of the road users killed in May, private motor vehicle drivers accounted for 17%, private motor vehicle passengers accounted for 7%, and motorcyclists accounted for 37%. Additionally, vulnerable road users such as pedestrians, pedal cyclists, motorcyclists, and pillion riders accounted for 73% of the road users killed during May 2023. The RSU said that males accounted for 93% of the fatalities, while females accounted for 7% during the month. Of note is that there were no child fatalities for May. Overall, 189 people have been killed in 172 fatal crashes since the start of the year. Fatalities have decreased by 12%, while fatal crashes are down 9% when compared to the same period in 2022. 13-year-old girl reported missing from Mami Bay, St. Anne. An Ananda alert has been activated for 13-year-old Destiny Thompson of Mami Bay, St. Anne, who has been missing since Wednesday, June 14. She is of brown complexion, slim build, and about 183 centimeters, or 6 feet tall. Reports from the St. Anne's Bay Police are that at about 4 p.m., Destiny was last seen at home. When last seen, she was dressed in a purple blouse, grey tunic, a pair of black shoes, and a purple socks. She has not been heard from since. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Destiny Thompson is asked to contact the St. Anne's Bay Police at 876-972-2211-119 Police Emergency Number or the nearest police station. Sections of Washington Boulevard to be closed this weekend. The National Works Agency has advised that, that motorists using Washington Boulevard in St. Andrew this weekend will experience some delays as the number of available lanes will be reduced to facilitate repairs to the Mina Wilmot pedestrian bridge. It says that the delays are likely to occur between the hours of 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. Manager Communication and the Customer Service at the NWA, Stephen Shaw, says that steel members and the deck of the pedestrian bridge will be replaced over the two days. He says that during the exercise, two lanes of Washington Boulevard will be closed at a time to allow for the safe execution of the works. Shaw says that the pedestrian bridge will be closed and is advising persons to cross Washington Boulevard at either the intersection of Ken Hill Drive or Headley Avenue, Denver Crescent. Both intersections are signalized and can allow for safe passage by pedestrians. Motorists are being advised to exercise caution when using the section of Washington Boulevard near Waterhouse this weekend. Mentally ill man slapped over stolen $100 When a man slapped a mentally challenged man over $100 that was stolen, he had no idea that the incident would land him before a senior parish judge on an assault charge. Presiding judge at the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court, Lorian Cole Montague, was told on Monday that on June 4, about 6.30 p.m., the complainant's sister was at her home when she heard a sound and asked her son if it was him. He indicated no. Soon after, they reportedly saw Devian Mullins holding onto her brother, claiming that he took $100 from him. Mullins then reportedly hit the man. A report was made to the police and the Mullins was subsequently charged with assault, occasioning actual bodily harm. Only box him one time, Mullins told the judge. Mullins added that the complainant was calling him B-man and waste man, then started to brag about taking the money. The Crown revealed that after Mullins was contacted by a police officer, he said, I disagree really call me for a madman that. 
Not impressed with what she heard, Cole Montague said, You're grossly out of order to say that to a police officer who was carrying out her duties. The police are do them work. So it would be the same thing if I press you a little more. You need to straighten up and fly right. The matter was briefly stood down to await the complainant's sister, who appeared on behalf of her brother. However, when she arrived, she told the judge that the family has decided to no longer continue with the matter and they are not seeking compensation for the assault. Hearing this, Cole Montague advised the Mullins that he was admonished and discharged. Advocate Network vows to continue protest. The Advocate Network has designated Thursday, June 15, 2023, as the final day of its public protest against the heavy increase in salaries granted to the political directorate. However, near midday, as approximately 10 people gathered at a National Heroes Circle across from the Finance Ministry, they declared that they would continue demonstrating against the controversial pay hike. Co-chair of the group, Professor Rosalia Hamilton, made it clear that they are not asking for a full rollback of the wage increase, but they want the government to be more considerate towards the people of Jamaica. We have asked for a rollback to at least 20%, which was the minimum increase for all public servants. We want to see those accountability measures in force, and once they are in force and they can adequately justify this increase, then there will be no quarrel. But we can't put accountability measures in place after the fact. We expect that you will put your accountability measures in place, then make the assessment to justify the increases, Hamilton told the news. Her reference was to Prime Minister Andrew Hulness's announcement last month that the government is to implement several accountability measures for the political directorate. Hulness told a press conference on May 22 that written job descriptions for members of parliament and the cabinet ministers were already in place and would be tabled in parliament shortly. Those were done in 2021. We will table those so the public can see what the job entails, Hulness said. He also said that a code of ethics to govern the conduct and the duties of MPs has been developed. On Thursday, Hamilton said that the next step of the advocacy network will be to see whether the code of conduct will be signed by all politicians, as well as when the outline of their job descriptions will be announced. She also expressed the outrage that documents justifying the wage increase have not been published. Her co-chair, Robert Stevens, also expressed the outrage over the salary increase. How can they defend a wage increase for themselves while everything else is falling apart? It is clear that they have no understanding of what the needs of the people are, he said. Two killed in drugs hall car crash Two people died from injuries sustained in a motor vehicle crash on the drugs hall main road in St. Anne on Saturday morning. Then our 49-year-old Gregory John of Lilyfield Road, Bamboo in the parish, and an unidentified woman. Police report that John and the woman were involved in a crash around 12.10 a.m. When the police and the fire brigade arrived on the scene, John and the woman were taken to hospital where they were pronounced dead. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.